Hey everybody, I'm Marky Ramon, drummer for the Ramones for 15 years amongst other things. What got me started? Uh, well, my parents brought me into the living room, saw the Beatles on TV, changed my world. Uh, very influenced by Ringo, very influenced by the British Invasion. Uh, I can name a few groups, the Kinks, the Who, the Yardbirds, uh, obviously uh, the Stones, and all these great groups that were coming uh, across from the Atlantic. And as time went on, I started putting a drum set together, and uh, I started beating on things, driving my parents crazy, and uh, that's what I wanted to do at an early age. And I started to... Uh, record professionally when I was uh, 16 years old on my first band, Dust. We were one of the first heavy metal bands in America. And uh, we stayed together for two years. And uh, then I started uh, hanging out in the New York scene at Max's Kansas City, CBGB's 82 Club. You name it, I was there. <laughs> and uh, I started playing with uh, Wayne County. Uh, who was definitely an integral part of the scene at that time, uh, who was a transvestite. And uh, then from there, I uh, was asked to play with Richard Hell, and we formed the Vaudoids, and we did the Blank Generation album in Sire Records in 1976, when the scene was really just happening at CBGB's. We were very, very grateful to have a place to play like that, uh, which started really in 74. So I played there with three different bands at CBG, because I guess I was the house drummer. So there was Wayne County, Richard Hell and the Vaudoids, and then uh, Tommy uh, Ramon decided to leave the Ramones and asked him to join the group. So through Dee Dee and Johnny, I was asked at Max's Kansas City to join the Ramones. And uh, Tommy produced the first album, and we uh, did Road to Ruin. And the first song that I recorded was, I Want to Be Sedated. So the rest is history. Uh, it was just great uh, at that time, uh, hanging out with all the other punk luminaries and rock luminaries, the back room and Max's and CBGB's, uh, Debbie Harry, uh, my... Uh, buddy guitar player who was born the same day and year as I was, Johnny Thunders. Uh, Jerry Nolan, drummer for the Dolls and the Heartbreakers. Uh, obviously the other Ramones. Uh, so we had a, we had a, a really cool camaraderie. Uh, very professional. We were all different. Uh, so uh, we all uh, appreciated each other's music. There were great magazines back then too, uh, rock magazines that we could get every, I guess every week, every two weeks, uh, even by the month. Uh, one of them obviously was Cream, uh, one of them was uh, New York Rocker, and uh, you know, there were really great photos of uh, people we, we liked. and. There was one magazine especially that stood out that I liked and had a great logo. It was called Rock Scene. You would see photos of Alice Cooper in there, Lou Reed, David Bowie, the Stones, uh, photos of the Who, uh, the Dolls, uh, Wayne County, Richard Hell. Uh, and uh, it really captured the essence of the New York scene at the time. And um, a, mag a, ma a rock magazine like that will never exist again. It was just so it was just so great and so of the time. And I always say everything revolves around uh, uh, time at the moment of, of time, you know. Uh, so it's really like a, a great uh, encyclopedia of rock knowledge. Uh, with the photography uh, of all these great uh, rock people. Uh, it wasn't just punk or glam, it was other genres too. Uh, you know, I, like I said, it was Stones, uh, The Who, 
again, the dolls, uh, Blondie, uh, Talking Heads, uh, the Pistols, uh, Alice Cooper, uh, things that went on at the back room of Max's Kansas City. And uh, we all knew that that was the magazine to get. So uh, I, I was proud to be in it uh, and all the other bands that I played with were in it. Uh, along with the magazines and the bands and the producers, the engineers that came along with the scene, uh, you had great photographers. Bob Gruen was definitely, uh, I guess, the cream of the crop uh, you know, in New York City at the time. And uh, you had great writers like uh, uh, Lester Bangs who was uh, really original in his writing. And um, you had uh, really cool producers, like Craig Leon, who produced uh, the first Ramones album. You had guys like Richard Goddard, who produced uh, the, uh, the Blank Generation album, that me and Richard held it, uh, with Bob Quine and Ivan Julian and Blondie. So, you, you know, it was just uh, one pot Hooray of everything, you know, you, you, you had uh, just everybody who were just curiosity seekers coming to the CBGB's and Max's and 82 Club. 82 Club was an old uh, uh, strip joint from the 50s, 40s, even may, maybe going back to the 30s. Uh, it was a place to drink, I think, during Prohibition. And then it opened up in the 70s, early 70s, as a rock place to hang out, like an after-hour place. After Max's and CBGB's closed, we'd all go there. And I remember walking out uh, from there, and it was daylight. So uh, you would have David Bowie in uh, one side of the place, Alice Cooper on the other side of the place, Lou Reed in the middle. And, you know, uh, uh, I met John Lennon there with Bob Gruen. He was, uh, that was his lost weekend, uh, you know, event, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he was a little tipsy, and uh, Bob Gruen had to hold him up. And that's how I saw one of my idols in that condition. I was probably in the same condition, too, so it doesn't matter. But uh, you never know who you ran into. It was great. Just like the back room of Max's Kansas City. And uh, a time like that, will probably never happen again. Uh, again, everything is relative to time. And uh, CBGB's at this point closed. There's no more Max's Kansas City. There's no more 82 Club. So uh, with all the new bands and everything that's going on, I suggest you uh, start a new scene. I think a lot of cool things are happening in Brooklyn. So, uh, that's just my take on the whole thing, and uh, we were very grateful to have a magazine like Roxy. Thank you.